Good evening. The school board meeting of Tuesday, December 13th, 1994 is now called to order. First item on the agenda is adjustments to agenda. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? <laughs> okay. Moving on to approval of November 8th, 1994 school board minutes. Are there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, the minutes stand approved. Uh, the next item is comments by high school representatives. We have Hello, my name is Patrick Cotter and I'm a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, this month has been kind of a slow month, one because of the weather and two because it's the transition period when a lot of people figure out that uh, midterms are coming up. <laughs> um, winter sports have started up. Uh, boys basketball had a great start at home against Gorham, then they didn't have such a good game against Falmouth. Um, hockey won this weekend against Scarborough. Girls basketball is undefeated and is enjoying their 6.30 to 9 o'clock practices because their coach is, from, is a teacher at Portland High School. Uh, indoor, and out, indoor and swimming have started practicing and they'll have their first meets in a couple of weeks. Juniors are finishing up their first draft of their research paper, which you can tell is taking a toll because a lot of them um, are s slightly sleepish in school. Um, and seniors are starting to get their colleges accepted or they're getting their, um, or getting their applications in. Great. Thank you. Middle school representatives? Okay. Um, in the seventh grade, Jess had a dance last Friday and we made more than $300. We just ended a sweatshirt drive and made more or close to $5,000 in profit. In January, the fifth and sixth grade can't schedule social due to basketball. We're trying to get hot shots for the fifth grade and happy wills for the sixth grade. Also, the student council is going to buy gifts for a family and since there is only one child in the family, we are going to donate the rest of the money to the Salvation Army. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carla, you have a question. No, actually, they don't have a question. They have a comment oh, okay. relating to the okay. school, so it seemed like an appropriate time. Okay, thank time. you. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to mention I had an opportunity to hear the uh, fifth and sixth grade chorus, which gave a short concert at the Portland Museum of Art, and I thought it was appropriate that I say I thought they did an excellent job. Great. They were quite good. Good. Okay. Moving on to communications. I can stop sneezing long enough. Sorry, my allergies are kicking up. Um, the only one I have tonight is the um, five-year outline of the five-year rehabilitation plan. You may recall, of course, that Dan Reed, our maintenance director, gave you an early draft of this. Uh, frankly, I haven't had a chance to review it myself because he just delivered this hot off the press. But uh, as you can see, it carries. You had a chance to see the first part of it, and you know the kind of detail an explanation that is in there. I'm sure we will find that the same thing is true of the rest of it. And I do thank Dan. I don't think he was able to be here tonight, but I really appreciate that effort. It's a lot of effort for what it really takes up only a few pages because um, there's an awful lot of systemic analysis in there. So if you're watching Dan, thank you very much, and I'll make sure that I thank him tomorrow. And you may recall that we were asked by the town council to cooperate in the capital improvements planning so we're by the by the first week in December so we're really on schedule on that will will this be delivered to the town council yes I mean, they will see to actually get it. okay great okay any other communications anybody no 
Okay, moving on to superintendent's report and technology committee update. Okay. I'm really very pleased tonight to unveil our technology report. And we have teachers here, administrators who have been part of uh, that group. You've had a chance, um, at, because we distributed in the packet, to look at our, our report, which has an attractive cover. One, wonderful we can do with technology, Frank. <laughs> really, really pleased. Um, I just simply would like to take a moment to thank the members of the committee. Uh, Gary Lenoy has been our chair. I'm not sure we ever formally appointed you as chair, but you've certainly been operating as chair. Um, and I'm not sure who is going to be speaking tonight. Uh, I think you're going to. You three? All right, fine. Well, as we, as we uh, uh, invite each of you to speak, please identify yourselves so everybody on TV will know who you are, what building you work with. Um, you may recall, those of you who've been on the board in particular, that we've been trying to get a plan for, a vision for the technology. What, what really does this school district need to do for some time? And it's been coming in bits and pieces. Uh, and, and the introduction that I wrote for this, um, I tried to give you, if you are new to the board, a little flavor of how that went. As I put that together, I was struck by the fact that just four years ago, actually three years ago, when we were doing the community dialogues, uh, I was somewhat surprised to find that the community was not totally united in its conviction that technology was important the wave of the future. Uh, some people were still kind of suspicious of the idea of a school district really making a commitment to technology. Not that they were opposed to using computers necessarily and understood that they were important in the business world, but they, we simply didn't have a coherent vision about what might be the case. Um, as we've gone through this, it's become clearer to me that what we really have to open our mind to thinking is that uh, where 100 years ago, schools were the repository of things like encyclopedias and sets of books that families couldn't have at home, and there were skillful uh, librarians available to them and so forth, that the school of really today, but certainly of tomorrow, is going to be a place where uh, a sophisticated technology networked to outside databases of a variety of kinds is available not only to students but to community members and that there are skilled people in the school who know how to not only run but maintain that system and who are available to be coaches to the students as well as community members. This is a whole new way of thinking about what the learning environment really is going to be for the future. Uh, and I think that as we worked our way through this plan that we begin, I think, to see that a little more clearly. I also see we have two of the students who are on our committee sitting in back, and I hope that we'll have a chance to identify and thank you. Your contributions are really important. So who's going to begin? And let's, uh, let's introduce everybody. Okay. <laughs> My name is Gary Lenoy. I'm a technology teacher at the high school, and Andrew Lomack McNair is a fourth grade teacher at Pond Cove, and <laughs> Randy Perkins, a uh, technology teacher and a computer teacher at the middle school. So we have all three schools represented, and we did on, on our steering committee. And perhaps the other members of the committee are here could stand up and we'll introduce you. And the students should stand up too, please. We have. Okay, we have. Paul Cox and Lucas Karen, two high school students who are very valuable members of, of the committee and contributing members. Hayden Atwood, our middle school librarian. Uh, two administrators on the committee, Nancy St. John and Nancy Hutton. And we had other people that dropped in every now and then. Rick DeFusco, our high school principal, and Scott Poole, and our business manager. We do have a few extra copies of the report. If you would like one or didn't get one, I'll leave these down here. and and you can grab one of those. What our goal is this evening, or how, how we're going to operate, is just to give you a brief presentation and talk about how we arrived at this and a little bit about what's in it, and then uh, give you people some time to ask some questions. And we don't want to take a lot of your time, because I see you have a big, uh, a long agenda tonight. The Technology Steering Committee started in the spring 
of this year, really, at least this committee, there were other committees in the past, and we hope this one will be different from those in the past because some of those gave some reports and that was the end of it. We hope that you hear from us time and time again and we continue these efforts. Um, the Technology Steering Committee put together this little booklet and in here we've included a mission which I brought to you uh, a few months ago in draft form and we added some belief, some vision statements to it. We've added some recommendations and we put together a little chart, kind of a five-year plan at how we think these things can be achieved, one way to, to achieve them. We also put down some figures in there and we were real hesitant to do that. Um, we were asked to put some, some dollar figures and some numbers down there and these are our best guesses. Those are approximate figures of what something like this might cost and it would take some further study by the committee to really come up with some firm figures. So I hope that you don't hold us to those figures. Those, those, like I say, are our best guess. Okay, things that we considered in our technology plan was that it was part of the school system's vision and plan, and, and we kind of modeled it after, after the school system's vision that the school board uh, developed and the school community developed. We would like to uh, enhance the communications within the system and, and beyond. We need to have training and support for our personnel in the system. Uh, we think that technology is within the curriculum. It's part of the curriculum. It's not a separate. Computers shouldn't be taught as a separate thing, but they should be taught of, as part of all disciplines. And we feel that they're important for all disciplines. We feel ethical use of technology is important, and we'd like and the com community involvement piece of that we feel is also important. And we feel that technology can offer one way where we can reach out to the community and offer them some things. Steps to develop our plan. We had a session over the summer where we kind of envisioned the future and what we would like to see and like to see happen in the Cape Elizabeth school system. Um, assess where we are right now, set some goals, and plan how to get there. And that's what we are presenting to you tonight, this plan on how to get there. The last part of this, evaluation and adjustment, one of the first things in there, we, we would like to see an ongoing steering committee to carry this forward. And we think that will make the difference between this plan and other previous plans. There need to be some people involved to, to carry things through. So we would hope that maybe you would agree with us on that and act on that. And that committee would be involved in evaluating and adjusting this plan each year as we go along. How can technology help us, our school system? Through sharing resources, managing information, accessing knowledge for students and staff, uh, we've heard of the, the global community and, and reaching beyond to all kinds of uh, things that are out there. Increasing communications in the system. I, I have a tough time sometimes getting a hold of Randy uh, or Andrew just by phone lines right now and maybe we could somehow increase that and make that easier for people. And preparing students for a future that will, will include technology. Uh, before you put that one up. Let me just talk a little, little bit about, need a little transition into this next slide. One of our big goals, and we figured that if, if anything came out of this, this plan, if we could somehow link our school system together and network things together, it would make the system work better, make things better for students and for the staff involved. Um, so this is kind of how the system works now. Um, we have telephones and sneaker net means, you know, walking around, running around. And to link the students and the staff and district residents and business and parents together, it kind of looks like this. Uh, with a network, it could look like this. With a computer linking all of them together in nice, neat, clean lines of communication. And the next one. My partners up here, please feel free to, to yeah. chime in any time. <laughs> <laughs> Increasing communication. The network can increase communication between administration and staff, be between our professional staff, between the staff and the students and the global community. And that's, that's how the network can link things. The, one of the three pieces to our plan was our mission statement. And I won't read that to you. It is in your packet and it, it is the same as the draft that we presented to you. 
uh, a few months ago. Uh, from that mission statement, we developed these six visions, or belief or vision statements. We feel that eth ethical use of technology will enable the students, staff, and community members of Cape Elizabeth to be actively engaged in learning. Number two, we feel a responsible managed network will enable us to communicate and collaborate with others throughout the district, the state, and the global community. I'm hooked up now by way of a modem, and I, I was recently involved in, in putting a conference together for a New England association. And I communicated with three other teachers around the state, one in Madison, one at Oak Hill, and one in Bangor, by way of a modem and a bulletin board system. And we coordinated and organized the planning for this conference through that. And we can connect through a simple computer and a modem, we can connect our, our teachers to the state and to the world. We believe ongoing staff development and technology will enhance all student learning and we also feel it's very important. It's not enough to just give these, these basic computer courses that we're doing now to our staff, but we need to continue to do those and offer as much and many opportunities to our staff. I'm, uh, as of this afternoon, we, we are just about through our fourth course in staff development. We've been teaching all of the staff Claris Works, which is the, uh, the multi-application program we've selected for the district. And we have over 60 staff members uh, pretty well versed in using the program. We're feeling very comfortable with it. We just had rubrics come back today, self-evaluation rubrics. Uh, they came back and they all said they felt very comfortable with the program. Okay, and I know that that program is going very well because it's happening in, in my lab at the high school. And we, we also are doing something for the first time this year at, at the high school as far as computer and service. And we're, we're doing it a little more difficultly. We've, we've taken on more than just one piece of software and we're also teaching a couple of platforms, Mac and, and PC. So it's, it's becoming more involved, but I believe it's going well, and we'll report to you about that, that high school course a little later on. Number four, technology will increase the efficiency of school operation and management. Number five, technology will integrate and affect all curriculum areas. And number six, we believe a core committee and support personnel will be crucial to the technological advancement within this system. Number six is very important. And the recommendations from that mission and vision statement, and you have kind of on a, on a sheet that spreads out into two pages. And what we tried to do is take the recommendation and if it applied, tried to give some indication as to what could happen in year one, year two, right up through year five. This plan actually takes us to the year 2000. Can you believe that? Um, and the recommendations, actually I need that first one, deal with, the first one is the steering committee really feel it's important that this, this be an ongoing thing, uh, given some direction by the board, report biannually to you, include some technology people within the three schools, and with something like that in place in the system, then we can see that this thing will go forward. The second recommendation involves the network and the blocks across how we can possibly get there. The third recommendation, a computer for every classroom with adequate computer printer ratio and, and at least one computer lab per building. Number four is important, commitment to some kind of regularly scheduled techno technological upgrading and maintenance. These things, once we get them, aren't going to take care of themselves. Uh, we need to somehow make sure that the piece of equipment we have that we invest in is working and working properly. We feel that personnel are a big part of this. And in here are some staff positions, starting small with maybe one person in each building for one period a day to devote to technology and then increasing that. And then maybe somewhere down the road, a, a full-time person that might be involved in this. Um, staff development, again, and integration of technology into the K-12 curriculum and how we can reach that. And I think this last one is being deal dealt with now, with administrative software to manage the system and making sure that it's compatible. And I know that's, that's being talked about and worked on at the high school right now. We, we feel that some of these recommendations actually don't apply to the future, but apply to current use of technology within the district. Uh, the, just the upgrade and the maintenance, 
uh, having people to oversee staff development, to implement uh, more advanced courses for staff. A lot of these are, a lot of these recommendations really apply to current use of technology right now. There are personnel in the building now that are graciously donating their time. I know Andrew runs around and tries to install Claris Works on the however many computers That's you part have of there. Now. Okay. <laughs> And, and we feel it needs to be, you know, a more efficient way and a dedicated way to do that. A quote, I'm going to end this session with this quote, Main Coalition for Excellence in Education, schools equipped with the right technical resources can become exciting learning environments for students, information centers for staff, and efficient management organizations for administrators. And uh, now we'd like to try to answer any questions you might have. I'd just like to make a comment that this was uh, really exciting to read. It was beautifully laid out. It really gave me a clear picture of where we want to go. And um, it actually let me know what we have now, which was very difficult in the past to get a handle on. And um, I was really surprised at how inadequately the middle school is um, sort of prepared for commute computers, that actually Pond Cove almost has more than the middle school. Um, so it's really something we need to, uh, to work on, and it was really well done. <clears throat> Pond Cove is in the enviable, enviable position of almost having a computer in every classroom, except for one grade right now. And they've done that through efforts of, of parents' forums and things yeah. like that. Charlie? You know how happy I am to see this. <laughs> yes, I do. And, and I attended the last meeting, and when I saw the first sheet, which was uh, the mission statement, I, that was really all I was expecting from out of this committee. And when they handed out the next sheet, which was the whole five-year layout, I was overjoyed. <laughs> and they wanted to know, do you think the board will accept this? And I said, they will accept it. <laughs> I, I really have to commend, um, you know, the people who, who stuck through this whole process since last June, and I was very impressed by the two high school student representatives at the few meetings that I attended. Keith and I kind of alternated. When he couldn't be there, then I was there, and there were a couple of meetings that we were there together. So I was very impressed by the, the total community involvement in this kind of plan. And, and it was interesting, too, when they gave the cost analysis. You know, they kind of did it kind of sheepishly, thinking that this might put the kibosh. But actually, from a budgeting standpoint, it gives us a framework. Yeah, I think I we've think been asking for that for a long important. time, to know what we, what we need to be looking at over the long term. It's very, very and important. It, one of the interesting things, too, is that in those yearly costs, we probably, 75 to 80 percent of that, we're spending that anyway and not having any cohesive uh, plan of how we were doing it. And so they weren't as alarming as, the, as they, I think they anticipated the reaction of the board, or this particular board member anyway. So I commend them all very highly. Um, I'd like to point out, because one of the things that we talked about on staffing um, and that, that we've already begun a shift of the way in which we, perhaps maybe the word assignment, uh, different teachers, and actually two of the teachers standing in the group, and, and partially Andrew, but not so much Andrew, uh, have been through that shift, because both Gary, uh, the, both of our teachers here have been actually started, you were both trained in, in the old-fashioned technology, if you will. Industrial arts. Right? Industrial arts. And that, uh, Randy, you're a little closer to your college experience, but I think you basically had an industrial arts background, too. And both of them have made the shift to technology, as is true of Betsy Nelson, also at the high school, who made the shift from business education teacher to technology. And I think this is an excellent model to realize that these professional uh, needs that are listed here are not necessarily add-ons. Uh, and in fact, one of the great 
problems whenever we talk about curriculum, and it's reflected in the minutes I gave you about a science meeting and about a literacy meeting. Teachers are, are absolutely going crazy because how are we going to do this as an add-on? And the answer, of course, is it's not going to be an add-on. It is going to be gradually possible for us to shift our thinking about how we use student time and teacher time in a learning environment that has the capacity to cut through a lot of things by using the kinds of of integrated software that's going to be available to us. Um, this is a transition time. It's a powerful time. And I just want to make that point about the resources. Uh, we're going to be looking in our budget resources instead of buying certain kinds of print materials. What kinds of materials do we need to support this shift? Um, and I think that this plan gives us some help in making those decisions in a coherent way rather than kind of grabbing a little bit here and there. It won't be easy. I mean, people kind of hate to give up something in what's going to take the place. And we will need the understanding and involvement of the parent <coughs> community so that they will understand what we're doing, too. But we can't do everything we're doing and add on technology as if it were uh, another layer. It has to be integrated. And, and I, I applaud the way you've already, and other people have already started doing that. Thank you. Um, I also thought this was a wonderful report and spoken a little bit to Gary before. Uh, it, it seems to me that it just has to happen, that we have to face the future with technology in our classrooms. My concern was for the, um, on the budget pages where you've listed the staff development costs. Um, I attended the workshop at the main um, school Board Association in October on the Goals 2000 and the Task Force on Learning, where they stress the need for matching your dollar for dollar, your technology plus your professional training. And perhaps we wouldn't do it dollar for dollar, but um, it's pretty inequitable here. And, and if we're going to have this wonderful technology, I would love to see everybody be very comfortable with it and be able to use it to full advantage in the classroom. and. Um, I thought that we perhaps would want to fund that category with a little bit more money. Uh, but, not leaving everybody out there, I also learned at this uh, workshop that there might be some grants through the, um, I wrote this down, the local education agency which will come out of the task force on learning where they had said they would like to put monies into professional development and it might be something we want to look into. It's the uh, initials were LEA, and it, I don't think it's available yet. Well, the LEA is just the um, kind of the shorthand for each local education. Yeah. I mean, CAPE is an LEA. Mm -hmm. um, what, what that money supposedly will be competitive grants. We were hoping originally that that would come to the state for as, for instance, the Eisenhower science money comes, everybody gets a little. Um, apparently, the money isn't enough for them to have made that decision so that it sounds as if there, it's going to be more like the Beacon School grants. There'll be more money, but it'll be a competitive grant process. Yeah. However, I think that's still a little fuzzy, but that opportunity is going to be coming along. Plus, I would think we've done such a great job here that perhaps we have a little bit of an edge to apply for a grant with all this groundwork done. <laughs> well, we're catching up. I mean, this uh, if, if you saw, there was a piece in the paper last night about Brunswick and Topsom, who are a Beacon School site. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have received almost a million dollars in a grant that will network not only their two school systems but also into the community. So this, this is coming, um, and we, we are finally in the ball game. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's wonderful. Very exciting. And remember, those are just best guess costs. I understand, but I was, just wanted to put the stamp of okay. approval there. <laughs> Other comments, Keith? Uh, I'd like to echo the... Uh, appreciation of this report. It was my pleasure to be uh, involved uh, in some of the meetings anyway, and uh, I was uh, continually uh, impressed by our professional staff in terms of their commitment to technology and uh, certainly all of their insights. Uh, just a, a tremendous committee to work on. Uh, one of the areas of the report that I'd like to uh, stress is uh, some sort of program for uh, teacher purchase of, of your computers, uh, there's, there, there is mentioned certainly in here. I think that's extremely important that we get the, each teacher to have their own PC 
because uh, it's truly becoming today's pencil. It, it's a, you know, although an expensive one, it's it's something that until everyone is completely comfortable using it, they're not going to be comfortable in using it in their curriculums. I think. Uh, again, uh, appreciate the the high school input of Lucas and Paul. Uh, thank you very much. It was great to have you at those meetings. So I have another yeah. question. Um, I'm sure you you investigated leasing over buying. Could you explain a little bit of that? Last year, when I we one of our goals this year was to get to to the get a report together before you people had budgets and, and dealt with budgets. I spoke to the board last year with a high school proposal, but it was after the budget was already over. And we did investigate leasing. Um, leasing does offer some options. You can get probably more equipment right off up front and pay for it over several years. And you also have the option of, you know, three, five years down the road, if you, you can buy that equipment usually for, you know, a very economically, a buck or something like that, or you could turn it back and get new technology. So, and it would give, you know, a dedicated amount that would be easier to budget for every year. So leasing certainly is an option that we could, we could look into. Hmm. Scott? Well, I'd just like to say thank you as, you know, Charlie and I, Char Charlie has been pushing this uh, longer than I have, and um, it, is just, it is just a real pleasure to finally see a plan all in one place. It looks like a very good plan, um, very well thought out, and it's just, this is what we need to do in so many areas, just map out where we're going over a long period of time with realistic, I know we won't hold you to the numbers right now, but some kind of idea, we just had no idea. <laughs> We had no idea where where we stood or or how to get to the to the next step. So this is great. You guys have done just an incredible job. I do I do have some specific questions that I'm I'm not sure are appropriate to ask um, right now. And what I'm wondering is where where do we go from here? Um, for instance, is the these budgets are they going to be built into mm. the building budgets? Um, that yep. kind of thing. <laughs> um, you will see them again very shortly. <laughs> but in the other form, in their building. Um, yeah, I building think, form. exactly. Um, I think that, for instance, um, the, the couple of associated issues, obviously space and buildings that can accept the technology has frankly been a stumbling block for us. And that one of the things that has made this plan more viable than previous attempts has been we are going to have buildings where you can plug something in without shorting it out. Uh, and we furthermore have put in circuits and we're hot on the trail of trying to sort out what kind of cables we want and so on for the networking capacity. That's becoming more complicated than we realized and that's one of the reasons why as you study this five year plan, you will see that we're turning to professionals for advice on things like that because it's not obvious. It's not just a matter of stringing a wire. And the, um, when you don't exactly know what you want or what exactly to call it, it requires a certain amount of study and so forth. So we're finding that step by step, that's why it's built into here to turn for some help and advice. I think the key issue is for the board tonight to accept the um, proposal and to furthermore accept the, um, the idea of having a steering committee. We talked about this. I think it's important for the board to think about uh, what kind of charge you want to give that steering committee. In a sense, the charge is really built in here. But um, do any of you want to address that? We had some discussion about that, um, exactly what kind of charge to give the committee. I, or do you want me to address that? But I don't want to be the only one talking here. <laughs> no, I, that's what I would like to see come out of this evening, at least, that we, we get the go ahead to, to form our steering committee and um, maybe set up some short-term goals like what Keith was talking about. Maybe somehow we can work out all the details and the bugs about some kind of a staff purchase plan and, and have it online for the beginning of September when teachers come back to school. 
so that that it's been talked about for several years since I can remember here and for some reason or other other school systems have done this and it just hasn't happened or it hasn't worked here I'd like to find out why and maybe somehow get that thing going and maybe set up some other goals like that I envision a, a, a goal is to maybe get some a little PR about this plan going out in the, the community so that other people in the community beyond the board uh, know about where we envision our technology in the Cape Elizabeth school so maybe that needs to happen as part of that steering committee but yes if we could get that at least going that I think would be the first step and some kind of a you know support for the overall plan this is the direction where we want to go maybe you don't agree with all the little steps and each little bite of the step but in general that's where we want to be five years down the road I think it would be helpful to have some kind of meeting, and perhaps it would be appropriate to do it under the auspices of the committee um, that will be formed um, to give information to parents and the general public about what's in this plan. Um, because I do think we need the backing um, of the community, and you know, I think they need to know, you know, what we're doing. Um, so we should talk about that. Um, I just have a couple of. Um, general, well, one question and, and a general comment. Does, does this really encompass um, the library areas as well? I mean, the libraries aren't really explicitly talked about except in terms of the um, computers for the library expansion, but do these figures for software and such include library figures? I think the library is the part of this school system that's the furthest ahead as far as technology. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that the upgrading and, and the maintenance is part of every library budget, but they certainly are included. It's entitled, it's intended to be for the whole system. Okay. And, and also, just in terms of the committee's thinking, um, you know, I noticed that eventually um, money for consultants is phased out. Is your, is your thinking that it is best to have all the expertise residing in the system, or do you foresee some kind of hybrid where you've, you've got people who are, you know, generally uh, very knowledgeable, but you're going to be planning on reaching outside for particular. I, I can address some of that. I, we have been thinking that the more we could have a network administrator or administrators within the system, the more they can troubleshoot any difficulties that would come up. Initially, it would be good to have a consultant for the implementation of the network, but then ongoing, we would want to ask them all the questions and then ongoing, we would want to take that over, just for that reason, to be able to take care of any problems that would come up. OK. And that's why we feel it's important to have some people in each building. Right. OK. And um, one last thing. I just want to make a comment. Um, I, I don't think we can stress enough the importance of the idea of the administrative software. By that, I, I assume you mean the grading and the scheduling and any kind of communication things between teachers. It's just amazing how much time some of the things that, that teachers and administrators have to do on a daily basis take. Um, and when teachers talk about overload and not having enough time, I can understand why when I get report cards home from the middle school that every single, you know, the report cards had to go around the world. Uh, while every teacher filled in the grade, wrote their comments and things like that. I mean, everything is, is just at such a plodding pace. There's got to be a way to speed it up. And um, I, think, I think that'll go a long way towards freeing teachers and administrators up for, for more important tasks and those clerical type of tasks. So I think, I think that's great. So t tonight we basically just have to accept the report and... Um, I would ask that you would charge me with setting up uh, or setting up in motion um, the composition of an ongoing steering committee. Obviously, I would hope that people who were doing it now would continue. <laughs> would continue. <laughs> but that, that it, since it was set up as a, uh, um, a committee with a charge to create a vision and try to come up with a plan, they, they've actually finished their charge. <laughs> so this is the first step that there is, we're accepting the fact this is so important and so in some respects so new and difficult that we it needs nurturing. I mean, this is a nurturing committee, not just a, a steering committee, right? Um, and we can see clearly that we need that. Uh, we, the charge would probably be also to report to the board by annually. I mean, we could start out with that. Um, and to explain 
what's going on with implementation of the plan, if recommendations for changes will come up. And it won't just be in the hands of this steering committee to make those changes. We had some discussion about this. Clearly, teachers, administration in the building are the lifeblood of how this works. But this is a communication device so that we can make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that the board is not um, wondering what's going on. Okay, Make a motion. Yes. I would move that we accept the report of the Cape Elizabeth School Department System Wide Technology Steering Committee and would charge the superintendent to at our at our at our will to create an ongoing system wide steering committee to oversee techno the technology plan. That committee would be charged to report biannually to the school board and it would include three technology support personnel, one from each building, plus broad representation from staff, administration, parents, students, and community. Second it. Second. Any discussion? Who's the second? Yeah. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you very, very much. And could I give one quick anecdote to sort of finalize some of this? Uh, last week, I had one of my former students, who is now in sixth grade, come in and roll the computer from my room down to his room in the old 30s building. He plugged in the computer and showed his classmates in the social studies curriculum uh, how Canada was formed in plate tectonics through Pangaea or Pangaea, using the CD-ROM and Groyer's Encyclopedia. Along with his verbal report, he was including this incredible technological, uh, I don't know what we would call it, but it was just an incredible presentation to the rest of his classmates. I got a chance for about three minutes to scoot down and watch him, and that's where this is all moving. That's what we're going to see with the students coming through that kind of thinking that they can use the technology to make presentations and solve problems. Amen. That's great. And maybe next time you won't have to bring those uh, overheads, right? <laughs> <laughs> something, something. They actually, I, Yours I, looked good, though, I must say. They, 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 were, uh, they, they are more than capable of bringing the computer in, but we talked about it as a cost-effective issue. It was, we knew it was a fairly limited amount of time, therefore, but I can assure you, they, the first thought was to bring the computer in. Oh, well, I remember when Andrew did and showed us. Um, was that last year or two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. That was a great presentation. So thanks for moving along. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Do we, the students want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It does feel good to... Um, actually get this far. Uh, I also, I, we haven't mentioned tonight, and I should, uh, I want to thank, uh, we, to get this far, you know, sometimes you have to reach out and get some help. Um, and last, early last spring, I guess maybe it was even last winter, Nancy uh, Hutton and I, and I think Nancy St. John was with us too, and I've kind of forgotten, were at a meeting with people from the center, the main center for educational services, and they were telling us one of their services was helping districts develop plans. We started with John Lunt, who then took a full-time job in, in Freeport, and Jay Trevero, um, who was new on board at the center, stepped in and helped us uh, do that. I recommend that approach because I think that it really does help. Even, that doesn't necessarily bring expertise that we don't have. In some cases, of course, it does. But what it does bring is a planning process, which is one of the reasons why we got this far. So thank you, Jay. Yeah. It also brings a mediating process, mm -hmm. too, and it's very important to have someone who knows the process in just developing something through a committee structure. It was really helpful. Um, and if you had a chance to read the little article in the back about calculus is made lively at Bowdoin, mm -hmm. um, I believe a couple of our high school teachers actually used a little bit of that Mathematica. Uh, but I certainly I thought it was a good article because it had a lot of stuff, including some of the discomfort mm -hmm. that people have that maybe the basics aren't being covered, or if you're doing this, is there something being left out? Those are things we'll be wrestling with all along. Okay. That's right. Um, the next thing, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to um, 
explain. The next item on our agenda, Project Adventure, has to do with a piece of the high school physical education uh, curriculum. Um, and we have the people involved in that have done really an excellent job of both checking out uh, training and uh, doing a lot of their rope uh, curriculum, rope climbing curriculum. Uh, however, we've also run into a few snags, so I'm going to request that the, this item be tabled until our February meeting. Primarily in our, uh, we thank the staff for giving us a demonstration on their uh, rope climbing techniques uh, last week. Found it very interesting and really quite compelling. Um, but we also were discussing at that time that that is a piece of an overall curriculum, and the request was made then that the department prepare a report on the overall curriculum and then put this piece in place as part of that, not just the only piece for discussion. So uh, I have discussed that with the department and they are willing to uh, prepare for February, so I think we need to table that until February. Okay. Moving on to the transition move. Well. Do we move or don't we move? <laughs> we think we do. Um, and I'm going to ask Sue Weatherby, as our systems com communicator here, project communicator, to um, bring you up to date. It, this really is uh, almost exciting on a day-to-day -day basis. We are fully expecting to move, but we would like to make the point that when you're dealing with um, issues of this magnitude, sometimes something might still go wrong, but we are going forward with a plan and Sue can tell you more the details. It's sort of day to day, but at this point, um, everything seems to be arriving in a timely fashion. Um, we had some major things happen this week. We got the electricity so that we could hook up um, the permanent electrical work. Um, the, we can now hook up the block heaters to the buses. We have been storing them out back and hooking them into the industrial tech wing at the high school to assure that they would start once the weather took a turn for the cold, um, which was not until last week, fortunately. Um, that is up and going and the buses are back in the bus lot, um, as well as the lighting to the new community parking lot at the high school. So that's going to help some of our lighting problems. In regard to um, the building projects, um, the skylights arrived and were installed yesterday. Um, we obviously needed to have them in order to open. Um, today the stairs arrived and um, they're beginning to get them together and they will pour the cement and that will have to harden and then the railings go, will go up. Um, so that was a critical issue. And um, they're working on the elevator. I'm not sure that the elevator itself is here, but that is another critical piece that has to come together in order for us to open. Um, the contractor says we're going to make it. Our clerk of the works says we're going to make it. Um, when I walk through, I'm still not sure. <laughs> um, and that's the reason that you have this letter, but we haven't sent it out yet. Um, after this evening and after today, um, I think we're ready to put it in the mail tomorrow. So the letter that is entitled Moving In will go K through 12, so that not only parents who have children um, impacted by the move will get the information, but also um, parents of children system-wide will also get this communication. Um, it will be in the courier and also in the Pond Cove newsletter. So they have three opportunities to see it or miss it, and we're hoping that um, they will at least get it somehow. A couple of the things that we're planning to do, if anyone is tuned in tonight and has not received this yet, is that the move itself is going to occur on December 29th, at least the moving of the first and second grade classrooms. And this is going to be a combination of school department staff, our custodial staff and our bus drivers, as well as parent volunteers. And um, as a result of our transition meeting today, we have a significant number of parents that have come forward and said, I'm going to be around. I would like to assist with the process. So those teams are coming together. And right now, we plan to move the first graders um, December 29th from 9 to 1, and the second graders from 1 to 5. Um, we'll be contracting out the moving of the media center 
and that will occur on the 28th, so it will not impact congestion in the halls where we're trying to move classrooms. And the kitchen um, move will occur on the 29th, and we're contracting that out also. Um, some of the kitchen equipment will be moved to the other kitchens, um, and that, that part of it that we're not going to utilize right away can be moved to the new kitchen. So we won't have to store those things. We can just move them down and have them covered and be on site for hopefully the next move, which will occur in April. So that's where we are um, in regard to the moving day itself. Um, when they get their newsletter, they will find that January 3rd is going to be, or at least part of the day, is going to be set aside for teachers to be able to return to the classroom, those teachers whose rooms are actually moving, um, those teachers will have an opportunity to set up their classrooms um, from 8 to about 1. And at 1 o'clock, those first and second graders um, are invited or expected to come to school. And from 1 to 3, we'll have pretty much a regular school day that will incorporate um, orienting them to the building and so forth. All other students, meaning third graders and fourth graders and first graders that are housed at the high school will have a regular day of school on the third. So only those impacted by the move will be staying home for the morning hours. Um, as parents read this, the, you will notice that we are providing bus service for those children that stay home until one, at least as an option. And if you need that service, um, actually whether you need it or not, we're asking you to fill out a form on the bottom, on the back side of your letter that said, yes, I would like the bus to pick up my child on the 3rd. And we're asking that parents get that back to us by the 20th. And then we will send out a schedule of when they will be picked up to arrive at school in a timely fashion. So can I ask a question mm -hmm. here? I guess from reading your article here, or the little paragraph here about Tuesday, January 3rd, it appeared that it was more just a visit with your parents of the new classroom. But is that not true? Is it more they would stay then for the day? They would stay until 3. And they would have some kind, I mean, the parents might come and drop them off and see the classroom and then leave, and they would, mm -hmm. so it's not just a visit, it's a... No, they're invited to come, um, but actually their school day will go from one till three. And um, if parents, if that's not convenient for parents, certainly they can bring the child, visit, and then take the child home. But the, if the child stays, um, they'll be oriented to the school itself, to their room, um, to their new desk location, maybe getting their stuff together, and then we'll go home in the normal fashion at 3 o'clock, either a walker or a bus or whatever. Okay. I don't think that's quite clear. I don't know if anybody else had that confusion, but it, it may not be quite clear that they're gonna, you can just take them in, look at it for 10 minutes, leave them, and be on your way or whatever. Later on that day, too, we'll be having visitations or tours for the community at large at 4, 4.30, and 5. Um, so that also is included in, in the mailing that's going out. One of the other things that is in the mailing is, is how we're going to access um, the Lunt building. And the new parent drop-off area will be accessing the new road that goes down in behind the middle school which is now the area where the Ponco faculty parks. That will become the new parent drop-off area, and children will walk along that walkway into the Lunt building. Um, we realized that with construction going on that there could be um, some difficulty with walkers from both the um, Cape Elizabeth Park neighborhood and Brentwood Acres, and we are offering the option of all of those students being bused until April when we can reopen um, the parent drop-off area at the top of the Pond Cove School. If those children decide to walk, um, those in the Farm Hill neighborhood will have to come along the new sidewalk that goes along the new access road and then actually have to get through the parking lot. And that's why we're offering to bus them. We realize for first and second graders, you know, that could pose some dangerous situations if third and fourth graders, or fourth graders are at the middle school anyway, but if third graders want to walk and the parents want them to continue to do that, certainly that's an option, but that's how they'll have to get there. And for the Brentwood neighborhood, um, we will offer the bus option for them also, but if they do choose to walk, then they will enter the Pond Cove facility um, 
by cutting across there in front of Thomas Memorial Library. But they won't be able to use that walkway or fire lane that is right next to the Pond Cove School. That will become construction area with the new renovations. So if there are any questions that parents have, um, I encourage them to call my office. I can clarify any of these things. Um, we've addressed also what the school lunch options will be once um, we eliminate the cafeteria, which will be as of January um, 2nd, I guess, um, and how they'll um, continue to have physical education classes. Okay, and then the only other thing is we, we put a section in that says what's coming next, and that just talks about what we're hoping for in phase two of the project, but um, right now we're more concerned about getting through with phase one um, on time. Yes, Carolyn. Two questions, actually. Even after this goes out and mm -hmm. everyone has it and everyone thinks this is what's going to happen, I am assuming that there's last minute checks right up till vacation time on that wing. So if indeed somebody decides it's not ready. We certainly should it. have a very good idea by the last day of school, right. which is the 23rd. Um, they'll be starting to do um, the check punch or the punch check in the next couple of weeks. They'll do it in pieces and then the final um, uh, punch out will be on the 27th. Um, but we should have a very good indication, certainly by the time they go off for vacation, um, whether or not this move is going to happen. Okay. We have also had conversations with the contractor saying that we do not want to jeopardize quality um, in, in, in a rush to get this done. It's not a big deal if we have to move one or two weekends into January, um, and they know that. But um, they say That's we're going sort to make what it. what I was thinking, that we have this date in mind, and I didn't want everyone to feel like we had to meet that date no matter what. Um, the other thing is, on those Brentwood walkers, mm -hmm. you mean they're just going to cut down the lawn next to the library onto the... Like That's where they basically cut across anyway right. now. I mean, it happens sort of informally. Right. Um, there won't be... That fence will still be there. So fence will be there, though, but the they'll have to be on the outside of the right. fence. Okay. And we could, you know, plow a little pathway on the outside of that fence okay. um, for them to cut through, but they won't actually be able to come down what, what is considered the fire lane now. Okay. Yes. And the crossing guard will stay there? Crossing guards will still be at both locations. Okay. Any other questions, comments? It, it is a lot of information to try to get out in a coherent fashion. I think you've done a good job. <laughs> it's very difficult. I'm sure you'll still have questions, but just let's just hope the schedule holds. And if people have specific questions, you know, feel free to give me a call. Community services, I'm sure that one-on-one -on -one I can clarify things for them. This is sort of something that had to go out to everyone, and certainly we couldn't cover every nitty-gritty detail. Um, but I think I have most of the answers. If I don't, I know to where to find them. So please feel free to call um, if you don't understand. Thanks, so. Thank you. Um, I, next item, uh, I think, is fairly simple, I hope. Um, as I look at the calendar, I realize that January, the second Tuesday in January would be the 10th, which normally would be an early board meeting, but one that we would normally go with. However, since um, school doesn't start up until the 3rd of January, uh, that would be the week we would have to prepare the packet, and I'm going to be elsewhere. Uh, so that's going to be a problem, but uh, even more so, it's um, as I look at the kinds of things we normally work on, this is a fairly light period of time. So we'd, if we have our meeting on the 10th, we're not going to have much on the meeting. Other things will be coming along. So my recommendation to us, to you, is to um, uh, make a motion to fix January 17th as the date of your meeting. And we have looked for a meeting place at that time, and the high school library is available and of course we sometimes do use that for a um, alternate meeting area so if you don't have any big objections I would like to recommend that okay I'll make a motion that we move the January board meeting to Tuesday January 17th at the high school library 
there a second? Second. Priscilla. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. I think that will work out better. And the next two items, I think we can, uh, we don't have anybody here to report on, but I put in your packets minutes from uh, two other systemic meetings. In other words, on this um, agenda, there are three systemic issues addressed uh, ongoing issues in the reading committee. Um, we are getting cranked up with our. K-12 science, uh, again, we have done individual building by building things, but this, this is particularly a discussion that focused on K-8 science, but uh, we certainly wanted to make it systemic and need to do that, make sure that we are looking at those things in that way. Um, picking up on the technology, uh, the grant that we're, we're looking at to uh, put in a planning grant for is really math, science, and technology together, although it happens to be an emphasis on science for elementary teachers. Um, again, a systemic approach and an integrated approach. Um, and when we were doing uh, our discussion at the reading committee, we really started thinking about literacy um, and not just print literacy, but technology literacy. These things are quickly coming upon us. I mean, you can't do anything in a computer program without realizing you certainly are dealing with print. And perhaps even more importantly, you're dealing with tons of data. And we have to learn a whole new set of, of really skim scan skills to absorb that data very quickly and somehow figure out what the core issues are. Uh, these have real implications for how our teachers work. And ironically, in our, our reading com committee, we decided that we need to do the less is more. We need to do in-depth reading of short and difficult items rather than stressing lots of reading on fairly easy things. There's a place for that, but it's the balance issues that we got into. So I, I don't want the, the minutes are not there necessarily for in-depth discussion. I'll be happy to hear any comments you have, but more to let you know that these kinds of discussions are going on and more and more boards as well as um, individual departments are going to have to think about these things systemically. Any comments, questions? Um, per perhaps, though, we could um, have the board members apprised of the meeting dates of uh, these meetings when they come up, just in case somebody might want to drop in. Right, and they sometime. do certainly be very welcome. Okay, and the last item on my list is just an update on, on the human dynamics. We did do a um, two-day workshop. Uh, originally, had frankly thought that might be a good time for parents. It turned out, of course, to be, I should have realized this, between Thanksgiving and the uh, December break, um, we probably couldn't have picked a worse time for parents. Uh, but we did have a few parents, and we took the opportunity to also add some of our support staff um, largely, mostly, I think, our, our secretaries in all three buildings. But um, in addition, we had a couple of guidance counselors. We had a school nurse, and we had a school board member. Um, so I've had a lot of feedback in the few days since then. We did the two-day rather than the four-day, and some people are asking me when we're going to do the other two days. I don't know when. But I thought, by and large, it was a positive experience, and I certainly enjoyed doing it again myself. Well, I'd, I'd just like to comment, as a school board member who was there, you did a very, very good job. And it, it was definitely an opportunity to get to know uh, people who you work with in, in a different way, in, in a way that uh, makes you more respectful of people's different ways of communicating. Very helpful. It does that. I, uh, Rick, did you show that tape to the administrator certification group? What was their response? Were they interested? Yes. Yeah, I, I was kind of, yeah, I was. Again, it was a two-hour session, and we tried to, you know, bring about a lot of discussion. And yeah. It was very interesting. And Mary, Mary Brunch was there, so between the two of us, uh, it went very well. Well, it, it does offer people a way to look at um, some of our, our, the ways in which we communicate differently. 
and to understand how that can be used as a strength rather than uh, a block. And I think that is critical. Here we're talking about integrated curriculum. We're talking about systemic understanding with people who don't work together, uh, people who see things kind of as a high school teacher or as a middle school teacher or as an elementary teacher. Uh, boy, we have to learn how to talk to each other. Uh, that's really critical. And to respect the various strengths that we all bring to these discussions without getting bogged down in some of the the roadblocks that we sometimes do. So uh, I really think it's a nice uh, approach and I'm glad people enjoyed it. Yep. And that's my report. Okay, moving on to school board subcommittees and reports, finance subcommittee, Charlie. Uh, we met at 6.30 in the superintendent's office because we have lost our conference room due to the renovations going on upstairs, but it was a nice environment. <laughs> um, wish. We actually almost met as a board as a whole so that was nice. Um, we reviewed the appropriations report. The Scott gave us the salary line year end projection. We all signed the warrants. Um, he gave us, Scott gave us an update of the audit that's been ongoing since September and is about to be completed in a week. Uh, we reviewed the school lunch program, uh, the state report, and we um, met with a uh, um, staff person about request for reimbursement. Any comments? Any questions? No. Moving on to school building committee. Connie. We had our monthly meeting uh, in November. Um, actually, it, what I sometimes have difficulty is remember exactly what went on because it's kind of a daily occurrence, you know. I mean, let me think if we gotten to such and such. Um, <clears throat> We had quite a, a discussion about this whole issue of what kind of phone wires, what kind of cabling, what kind of intercom. Since that meeting, we did get that pretty well straightened out. We still haven't made final decisions, but we have really sorted out the issues that were raised. Uh, basically, we own the intercom system. Um, that is part of the subcontracted package. Um, we, the building is fully wired for capacity for telephones. However, we're not going to put a telephone every place where there's a capacity. That would definitely be uh, excess in what we, uh, we expect to have for a number of lines. Uh, we're also discovering that, uh, and partly we discovered this through the technology report, that just stringing cable is not as simple as just stringing cable. You have to have a um, pretty, pretty complete s uh, system networking package, and we are working on that. But we don't have to make that decision now. We, we're going to be moving into, uh, and I think we probably ought to find some other way. We keep saying the Lunt building. The Lunt building is gone. What we're dealing with is Section C of Pond Cove. Uh, but for convenience sake, we keep saying Lunt building. But um, we are, are really basically going to be sticking with pretty much what we have now for, uh, for um, uh, intercom and telephone and simply transferring that. But when the whole building is wired, there will be some differences. Um, as far as computers go, our computers are plugged into the wall anyway. They're not networked at this point. So that's not an issue, but it will become an issue as we put the media center together and so forth. Um, I think that was. We formed was a subcommittee for uh, movable equipment. Right. Which I'm will not start to meet in January. <laughs> And uh, right. there are three board members who are going to serve on that, <laughs> Beth, and and I'm chair. And this, the business manager is going to join us. Uh, another building committee member is going to join us. And I believe an administrator is going to join us. I believe it's Nancy. Yes, <laughs> Nancy. Charlie, maybe you ought to clarify for the public what movable equipment means. Movable, movable equipment is... Um, it's it's the, the the chairs, the the desks, um, the library facilities, the things that people sit at, the bookshelves, those kind of things. Um, it it can be um, for your computer labs. It can be computers. It can be additional kitchen equipment. It's a broad range of things that we fill the building with that we need. It can be, it's your maintenance supplies, those kind of things, the, the long-term things that you need to keep the, the building, um, the type of equipment you need to keep it clean, uh, those kind of things. 
it's a broad range of things. So there's a, a lot of, of, of wants for essentially a small amount of money. It doesn't mean replacing every desk. We have already gone through the desks, um, normal, what you think of as classroom equipment, and uh, pretty well sorted out what must be replaced and what can be continued to be used. And in our transition meeting this afternoon, we had teachers who were quite happy with uh, knowing that they were going to be reusing some old uh, but still usable bookshelves, and their request was, can we buy the paint to paint them? <coughs> so that it will match the trim colors. And of course, uh, we assured them that we would be doing that. That spirit, I want to compliment staff again for the tremendous spirit of getting through what is sometimes a difficult situation. And that was another example. I I'm sure we can get the paint. And I think one more thing that, that uh, is in Sue's letter that's going to go home to the parents. but. Uh, I don't think we've really talked about it, is there are going to be flashing school zone lights now in three locations. Mm -hmm. So people might slow down, you know, when they're going by the school. Um, where are they going to be located? On Hill Way? By Cumberland Farms. By Cumberland down Farms. By the, um, down Farm by Hill Road. Farm Hill Road. Yeah, so hopefully our kids will feel a little safer. People do zoom through there, um, those kids going through. Do you know when they're coming? January. We have the posts in. The Public Works put the posts in, so they're ready. But we, we've ordered them, but they're not in yet. OK. okay. Uh, moving on to the Policy Subcommittee. Beth? Uh, the Policy Subcommittee met on Wednesday, November 30th, in Connie's office. We spent uh, most of the time going over policies relating to community services, and then um, reviewing quickly some special ed policies that had been out that we'd been working on, and then a lot of sort of um, sort of administrative type policies that needed to be just reviewed and accepted as is and checked over. Um, but I guess we'll get to that under new business. The next policy subcommittee meeting was scheduled for next Wednesday, December 21st. But with moving the board meeting to January 17th, we're going to move the policy subcommittee meeting to Wednesday, January 4th. OK. Moving on to unfinished business. First item is update on playground conditions. We, uh, at our last meeting in November, we did discuss this. It was pretty much driven by our concern for the condition of the middle school playground. And as we discussed it, we realized there were really a number of issues. I'm going to simply read for the public uh, memo I sent you after that meeting, uh, responding to some of the issues that were raised. Um, I, I have a feeling it sounds like we're committing ourselves to death. It's really the planning is critical. and and these are ad hoc committees. They're not going to go on forever. So recommendation for a playground committee and a committee to review the current rate structure of use of school facilities. And I'll get to that one when, it, when you're ready. At our November board meeting, I discussed information regarding the condition of the playground outside the middle school. After our meeting, I met with Scott and Sue Weatherby to decide what would be the best way to resolve the various problems that surfaced. During our discussion, we reviewed the following points. Number one. We need to decide how the space between the Pond Cove and middle schools will be used by students. For instance, should some use be made as a playground? Number two, will the fifth and sixth graders continue to use the ball field in current play structure for recess? Number three, what outdoor use of the grounds will seventh and eighth graders need? Number four, what will be the continued use of the current play structure at the middle school by the community? Number five, what is the best ongoing maintenance plan we can devise for all of our playground units? We have addressed most of the most pressing needs for repair of the current middle school structure so that we do not have to make an immediate decision about its future at this time. We recommend that the school board appoint a committee to review these issues and report back to the school board by the March meeting with specific recommendations. We also recommend that the committee report to the building committee because of any implications for site considerations. Suggested composition of this committee is as follows. I'd like the business manager, Scott Poulin, two school board members, Phil Jewett, the assistant principal at middle school, Wayne Doerr, interim principal at Pond Cove, and two parents, one from each school. Um, the 
in our discussion of site considerations at the building committee, we actually have begun discussion about how that ground will be used between the two buildings. Um, but it, unless I'm forgetting something, I don't remember any definite final decisions about that. Furthermore, we need to involve the administration in this discussion because we will have a fifth grade wing, the current administrative wing, if you will, of the middle school, somewhat uh, it certainly would be possible for those youngsters to access the ball field and, and use that uh, middle school playing field. But on the other hand, there may be other ideas that we need to consider. Um, there are fire lanes in that area between the two buildings, and there also is the issue of noise. But we need to at least nail down what the administration and the teachers in each building think will be the best way to uh, have that ground used, that space used, or avoided totally. I mean, we need to be clear about that, have some rules, and stick to them. Um, and we also, of course, need to, in is that particular uh, discussion should involve the building committee because it is a site consideration. Um, the other things, I think, are somewhat self-evident as far as um, administration goes. And uh, we will be seeking ways to understand what kind of upgrade of our playground equipment. And at this, I would expect this committee to look at all the playgrounds. We have four playgrounds. We have two at Pond Cove. We have the middle school one, and we have the kindergarten playground. There are some common issues. One of the issues that we get asked about is what about ground cover? Um, and those safety issues, what's the best ground cover, the most? Uh, we also had some discussions about handicap accessible play structures, and you have a somewhat different ground cover need with that in mind. I also had a discussion today with our nurse at Pond Cove who was telling me her concerns about um, the scrapes that children get in the current ground cover. So those are all issues that I'd like to see reviewed by this committee with specific recommendations, and I think that if we're going to be looking at one play structure, we'd better look at all these issues. I would just add that I think um, the committee should probably also look at funding, you know, whether there are some components that might be uh, handled by a community fundraising or a community effort, and which, or whether it should be done totally through the school budget itself. Um, I'll, I'll just say that um, Car Carla has already volunteered to be one of the two school board members on the committee, but I do have not heard from anybody else on this issue. Is there anyone here who'd like to serve? It's a very short-term committee with a very happy purpose. Keith, <laughs> 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 okay. 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 So Keith and Carla are the two school board representatives. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions about this? Do we need to move to yeah. establish this? I'll make that. a motion that we establish a <laughs> playground committee to report to the school board in March on all the issues raised. Is there a second? I will second that. Okay. Any discussion? Beth likes motion, so that's <laughs> sure <Okay>. to Beth. <laughs> all in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Okay, the next item is discussion and action on subcommittee to review rates and use of school facilities. Again, in our policy subcommittee meeting, uh, in reviewing some of the issues with um, policies to deal with community services, community services does a really admirable job of running our, the use of our school facilities, a much more complicated process than one might think. And we also schedule use of uh, major pieces of the building uh, that teachers are using, educational uses. Um, in many respects, we find that the uh, policies and procedures, as they have been worked out, uh, do very well. However, several issues have cropped up recently that do need review. Um, and rather than go into all those details now, just simply basically saying the rate structure. Uh, we don't charge for school people. We do charge for uh, out of town uses or for, uh, as a matter of fact, it was a local group that was a fundraising group. Um, what's the exact phrase you use to, that requires a fee? Basically a private organization, right? Um, 
and we find that these circumstances change from time to time, so it is necessary to go over that. We'd like to see on this uh, particular subcommittee, obviously Sue herself, two school board members. We'd like to invite one or two town council members, um, and I have not had any conversation with them about this, so with that in mind, we will invite them if they so wish, but since they, the, the budget for community services is really a separate and third budget, there's a town council budget, there's a school department budget. The town council, of course, has fiscal authority over us all, including community services, so we thought it would be a good move to have somebody representing them. And one member of the community services advisory board as well as a high school athletic director. That's our suggestion for that one. I don't think I have a timeline on there, do no, I? No, I was no. going to ask. Um, well, you can... Insert At the policy committee, we talked about starting in January, but I didn't think there was a final date on an ending point. It was to form it in January and proceed. So I'd like the fee structure to go into place um, on July 1 of the new year. So. Okay, then in, to, in, in order to give people notice and, and such, would April be mm -hmm. an appropriate time to have a report? Okay, and Beth um, has already indicated she would like to serve. And okay, Beth and Gail <laughs> will serve. Unless you want me to. No, that's fine. That's fine. So I would entertain a motion. I move the establishment of a committee for review of the current rate structure for use of school facilities and the report due by April. A recommendation. There's a second, Keep. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you. Uh, moving on to new business, notification of annual election of the superintendent for state report. <laughs> well, <clears throat> for purposes of uh, the, the, the major purpose of the statute originally was, as I think I put in my blue notes for you, for new board members, was um, actually it was to force school boards to hire superintendents back along when the um, school boards didn't always want to spend the money, I guess. Anyway, um, we have a form that we have to fill out every December, and it is appropriate for me to note at this time that my contract does run out in, um, in June, the end of June. Uh, at this point, I'm willing to discuss extending that contract, but uh, we're not prepared to have that discussion, certainly not right here and now, uh, so that I would simply make that indication and we can do that at a later time. But you do need to take, so I should explain, uh, you simply need to take a motion that I am your superintendent for the 1994-95 um, school year, and that satisfies the statute. I mean, I, I, I realize <laughs> every year we go yep, through this, through and I think this is just one that, of those things that... that our superintendent. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Charlie, too. The, the fifth year of listening to this and <laughs> <laughs> making this motion, <clears throat> I move that we appoint <laughs> Constance Goldman, our superintendent for the 1994-1995 academic year. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Well, you're glad that's over with. <laughs> <laughs> big, big problem. Um, thank you. The next item is policies first reading. Yeah. Uh, we have a list of policies for a first reading. Um, the first one is IGBAC, Referral to the Pupil Evaluation Team PET. It replaces IBBACE1. Another policy is JGEA, Suspension Expulsion Policy for Students with Disabilities. JGEAR, Administrative Guideline, Model Removal Procedures for Exceptional Students. JFCBR, Administrative Guideline, Non-Return of School Property, EEAC, School Bus Safety, EEACR, Administrative Guideline, School Bus Safety. Are there any questions or 
just, just so everybody knows, these uh, these uh, special ed policies have been reviewed by the special ed team, and this yes. is what they have brought back. Yes, the recommendation. They did. They went through the whole section in the um, policy booklet, and yes, they have been reviewed, worked with on them, and um, these are what we need. Are there any questions, comments on any of these policies? Charlie? On non-return of school property, JFCDR. As far as the buildings now, are, are these essentially the rules that you're following? Yeah, that's what we tried to go for. Okay. <laughs> that there isn't some hybrid out there. We don't think so. Administratively being done. We don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I want consistency. Right. <laughs> okay. Do we, I guess I didn't Since form it's it. the first reading, <clears throat> yeah. bring them back next month for a second reading, but you have more. Yes. Um, then we reviewed policies, and we'd like them accepted as they are. Um, they are IGBACE2, Notice of Authorization, IGE, um, which was just a title change, Community Service Programs, IGER, Administrative Guideline, Community Services, Budget Procedures and Format, KG, Community Use of Facilities, of School Facilities, JGD, Student Suspension and Expulsion, DBAR, Administrative Guideline, Budget Disbursement, DBR, Administrative Guideline, Annual Operating Budget, DIR, Administrative Guideline, Fiscal Accounting and Reporting, EER, Administrative Guideline, Transportation Services Management, um, EFR1, Food Services Management, EFR2, Food Services Records and Reports, EIR, Insurance Management, and GBN, Employee Resignations. There were basically um, no changes in those policies except for maybe a few words here and there. The most fun part of being policy chair is getting to read those lists. I'm going to take a vote on it. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I'd like, I guess I'd like to make a motion that we uh, review and accept those policies as stated. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. And then lastly, I'd like to make a motion that we delete policy KGR use of school facilities, and EEACCR, student conduct on buses. I second it. Yeah. Second it. OK. Any discussion? Charlie? The, I can just make a comment that EEACCR was replaced by JFCCR, which they were just duplicates, basically. Um, and the KGR was um, a one that's outdated and that we're working on the new one with the new committee just formed. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, that was my question. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? 7 0. Okay, the next item is school board appointment to the sabbatical committee. Oh, no. Let me explain, explain what that is. <laughs> yeah. uh, the teacher contract carries language um, with a timeline and a process for reviewing any applications that teachers may be making for a sabbatical leave. We've had two applications, and we need to have a board member to be part of a group, including the principal of the, uh, of the specific schools from which these requests come and the superintendent, and we will be meeting probably in January to review those requests, January, early February. We try to do that be, before we really get into the budget session. Do I have any volunteers Charlie? to serve? On That's one thing I've never served on. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't let you get off the board, Charlie. With that. <laughs> Actually, it should be a new board member so they know what a sabbatical committee is. But. Well, it'll be come before us for a vote. Oh, that's so. 
Okay, the next item is nominations for athletic fee coaching positions for 1994-95. We have two, seventh grade boys basketball, Michael Newman, and eighth grade boys basketball, Rolly Moore. <coughs> Dinner kind of motion. <laughs> Charlie. I move the appointment of the seventh grade boys basketball, Michael Newman, and the eighth grade boys basketball, Rolly Moore. That's your second. second. Gail. Any discussion? All in favor? 7-0. And there being no further business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So oh, seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay, meeting's adjourned. Now, I did not. Um, Actually, by tabling project adventure, we got out of the problem because um, when the it was together, right? I knew it would take a while <laughs> to get into it.